in the depths of winter on a cold and foggy February day. I'm on my way to the mysterious woods of a part of Derbyshire I've never explored before. It's a chance to discover hidden ruins, a shrine and a family burial ground. Come with me as I take a walk through the Goit Valley. So, today we are in the Goit Valley in the Derbyshire Dales and it is so foggy, it's quite creepy actually. I've just parked up and I'm just making my way up the path and I'm trying to get away from all the other people because there's dog walkers and families with children and it's quite, quite busy actually. I had to drive through thick fog to get here but um, it actually adds to the mysterious atmosphere of uh, this ruin that we're going to go and see this morning so I shall make my way onto the trail and I'll be back with you shortly I wonder where those steps go I'm too curious let's go up and have a look Okay, so the path splits, um, so I'm going to go up here, just have a little look. There might be nothing up here, but you never know unless you go and explore. Ooh. Look at these beautiful logs covered in moss, wow. I don't know where this path is leading to. So today we've come to the Derbyshire Dales and we're quite close to Buxton which is a spa town, it's beautiful, it's where the water comes from if you recognise the Buxton bottled water. So the place we're going to explore today is a ruin of Irwood Hall and Irwood Hall as you can see is set amongst the deep dark depths of this mysterious forest. It's extremely foggy today, it just makes it so atmospheric. Don't really know where I'm going. Everyone else went down below on the footpath. I'm now following, it's still a footpath, but it's a lesser trodden one. And I've no idea where I'm gonna end up, but as usual, that's all part of the adventure. I brought any water with me today. I've actually bought my uh, water filter and I can hear a stream down below, so I'm going to collect some water from this stream um, so I can filter it later on for when I have my lunch or when I want to stop for a drink. So let's head down now and see if I can get some water. Ooh, it's the typical Peak District brown water. Um, it's not the clear bottled Buxton water that one would assume you'd get down here. But never mind, I'm going to collect some in a moment, hopefully not fall in. and. Um, and then we've got all our resources ready to have a good day. You can 
see how the mud's washed away from these steps. So I wouldn't be surprised if I slip over. There we are. Ew. I'm not looking forward to drinking this water. I'm gonna make sure I boil it properly. But uh, I'm only gonna be drinking tea, which is brown anyway, so hopefully I won't notice. But, um, oh well, we can give it a go. I've also brought with me some round trees, random sweets, to keep me going. <laughs> right. way. I think it'll be this way, down to the hall. Glad we've got my walking pole. I understand that is farmhouse ruins, and this path will lead us to the graveyards of the family that lived at Irwood. So let's go and have a look. The small graveyard of the Grimshaw family and their favourite servant stands on top of the hill behind the ruins of Irwood Hall, providing magnificent views over the surrounding countryside. The main gravestone is that of Samuel Grimshaw, who died in 1883, his wife, Jessie, and son, Arthur, who died in infancy. Other names inscribed on either side of the memorial are those of Mary and Genevieve, his two daughters, and their husbands. So that was the burial grounds of the family that lived at Irwood Hall. Quite spooky really. Looks like there's a path over there. Maybe it's been washed away. Or is it stepping stones maybe? Well, it looks like we are going this way. So let's hope we don't fall in. I think my shoes are waterproof, so that's all right. <laughs> oh, it's muddy. I'm just gonna actually dip my shoe in the water just to get rid of some of the mud off it. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go.
Well, that's one way to get across, I guess. <laughs> I thought the path led up there, but that's actually a woodland path moving away from the hall because we've come a different way to avoid the crowds. We're having to double back on ourselves a little bit, but that's okay. I like to go in the opposite direction to everyone else. This once magnificent country house, enjoying wonderful views over the picturesque Goit Valley, is now just a sad pile of stones. It survived for less than a hundred years. It was built around 1843 and demolished in 1934 to make way for the construction of the reservoir. So it's safe to say, don't come here on a Sunday, especially when it's half term, because it's really busy, full of squawking children and barking dogs racing around. Hmm. We've taken the left turning where it said signposted to Pim Chair and it's a little bit bleak up here at the moment. Um, what's going on with my hat too? So I'm hoping the shrine is up here, although I can't see anything and I'm feeling really unfit. <laughs> Definitely feeling the fact that I've not been out hiking for a long time. Um, that's why I picked just a short route today because I wanted to just meander along at my own pace. Um, regretfully, it was on a day where there's lots of people, but um, never mind, at least I'm out taking steps to getting back to my adventures. <laughs> um, but yes, it's very foggy still. I was hoping it would lift a little bit. The forecast is actually rain, or chances of rain this afternoon. So what I want to do is if we can find the shrine, and once we've taken a look at it, um, I want to then find somewhere to pitch up so we can make a little camp. That is the plan. Um, fortunately, there's a lot less people around here. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to be stealthy um, because obviously I don't really want to be seen. Um, but I'm hoping, because I've brought my tarp with me and I have got one, one trekking pole, so I can either use the trekking pole to make some sort of shelter or I have got the paracord and guy lines as well and I haven't practiced anything to do with uh, tarps since the last time back in I think it was October so it could be a complete disaster especially if it rains but I just thought I'd bring the gear with me and we're going to set up camp somewhere it shouldn't be too difficult to, <laughs> to hide in this fog though because I can barely see the path in front of me. I bet it's really nice in the spring or in the autumn because all this heather would be pink and purple. It's 
complete whiteout. I hope this is the right way. see it. How cute. Let's go and have a look. When the Goit Valley was a flourishing community, the shrine was a popular destination for people seeking a peaceful place to pray. Now the villages and farms of the valley are long gone vanished with the advent of the 20th century reservoirs of Fernley and Irwood, and the monument seems somewhat isolated and forlorn against the pine trees. Wow. Rotten flowers, lovely. Holy water from the shrine at Knock. I can't believe the quality of the roof. They really do look after this little shrine. It's such a cute little building. It's so nice to see that it's maintained and people do actually come and visit. So, let's see if we can find somewhere stealthy and make a camp. Oh, so small. How cute is that? <laughs> oh, it's so boggy. Let's have a little look in here. So, I think what we'll do is we'll just set up a little camp here amongst the trees. I am not fond of woodland camps, so I'm not going to lie. I much prefer being out in the open on a mountain to being amongst the trees and the undergrowth. But this is where we are and it's nice and soft here. So I think we're going to pitch against this tree um, into this area here, possibly. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Let's have a go. I know it's not the best, and I know it's only my second attempt at putting a tarp up. What I'm going to try and do is get some guy line on that centre one there and tie it round 
the, the log that's behind um, to see if that will like lift it out a little bit and give me a bit more room. Um, feels like it's going to rain, um, so I need to get this done now so we can have some lunch. As you can see, I've just attached a bit of paracord and wrapped it around the log. <laughs> and it seems to just be lifting it out a little bit to give me a bit more room. Sitting on a load of plants, but that should be, that should be fine. Um, in fact, I might open it out a little bit more and get my bag and stuff off the wet ground. One minute. It's not burning today. It's cold. It's about five degrees today. So now it's finally looking like it's going to boil. We're going to have a cup of tea first. Um, I bought just a couple of tea bags with me today. Spitting with rain. It's nice to just have a little bit of shelter. Tea bag? I'm going to add the milk first. I know it's frowned upon, but because we're waiting for the water to boil, I might as well. Ooh, I'm going to try and catch, catch fire. We'll see how we get on with this water boiling. Ooh, it's definitely warming. I have brought with me some homemade cobs. And I'm really looking forward to these because I cooked, I, well I boiled a gammon joint last night so I've got gammon and apple sauce in those and I've also bought some baby bells. So I'm going to have an absolute feast with my local water and my gammon and my baby bells. And hopefully I'll get a cup of soup out of it as well. So. As you know, I bought a nature hike tent, which probably would be okay for winter as long as, it's not, as long as it wasn't extreme freezing cold temperatures. The problem I've got is my sleep system. Um, I think I would freeze to death with my sleep system. So I've got a Rab 800 Ascent sleeping bag, but I've only got a Trekology UL80 sleep map. And I think the R rating is only like, is it one or, anyway, it's like a summer one. I believe, anyway, I'm not an expert. Um, and I use a foil mat underneath that. So I think I would freeze to death, which is why, as tempting as it is when you see everyone else um, on YouTube going out, doing all these fantastic winter camps and snow hikes and stuff, and I'd really like to try it, but I just think I'd be a bit out of my depth at the moment and I haven't got the money to buy a load more kit. Um, and I just haven't had the time, really. Uh, it's also to do with the time. Um, I've not had a lot of free time because I've been studying and stuff, so this winter I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and also that's not what this channel is about. It's not just a wild camping channel. It's not what I wanted it to be. I wanted this channel to be about showing off places in the UK that you might want to visit as well. Or if you can't visit, you can see the places through my eyes and through the lens of my camera. So it's not just about wild camping and stealth camping and stuff, because I know that gets the most views on YouTube, or that's what it seems anyway. Um, when I went on my camper van trip to North Wales, the views on those videos aren't nowhere near as high as when I go wild camping, which I find really hard to believe really, but, but hey ho, that's what viewers want. Um, but I'm not going to change what my channel was meant to be about just to get the views. I'm hoping that when I show more, more and more places in the UK that you could possibly visit um, or you'd like to see, then the views will go up anyway. Now then, my brown water starting to fizz. Okay. 
pool. As predicted, it's just gone really dark and quite cool and I think that's the wind I can hear. Those tall trees over there are moving. Um, I think it's definitely starting to, to rain. It's so dark. I know you can't probably see it on camera but it's gone really dark and it's gone cold so once I've drank this I'm going to get packed up and I'm also going to get my waterproofs on I think because I might get caught out in the rain there's a person there just making a way to, to the shrine that's just round the corner there it's amazing how a moment ago I was stood there enjoying the view and as soon as I sat down it's like you can hear the wind coming through the trees hope it's not going to be a lot of rain because it's already a muddy path It's quite spooky. Ugh. Let's go. So this is where we had a complete whiteout before and now we can see all the evergreens and the landscape. What a difference. Look at those, look at those black clouds. <laughs> I don't think it'll be long before the rain comes down. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Lilu and I go on solo adventures around the UK. We do anything from hiking, car camping, roof tent camping, camper vanning, wild camping, a little bit of bushcraft, I'm still learning, but I'm trying to do all these different things and show you places all around the UK that are amazing to go on adventures. I do it all on my own and I like to have you guys for company. It's just started to rain, oh no. The sky is so dark. I can actually see the rain now, so uh, trying to get back down to the main path. Still got a couple of miles to the car. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be much. Hopefully it's just passing over, but <laughs> you never know. Well, it's definitely raining now and it's gone really cold. So we've had another quick look at the hall and I was lucky enough just to get the drone up and there was only one or two people there and the sky was really clear so quickly got the drone up to get an overhead view of it it's amazing really i really like looking at ruins and stuff and trying to imagine what it would have been like for the people that lived there but people have turned up again the rain started coming down really heavy again so my jacket's on my hood's up because i don't want to get too cold and uh, we're now on this path i didn't come down this path before um because we, we took the woodland walk, but this is probably the quickest way back to the car. So I'm gonna get a stomp on and go down this path and it goes up the other side and head back towards the car park. And there he is, there's little Scout parked up waiting for us.